Thank you. <laughs> there is a god, and he has a pretty good sense of humor. <laughs> As Games Workshop's officers are flooded by literal shit after they spewed some good old-fashioned verbal bullshit on the internet. I refer, of course, to this nonsensical community post right here. The Imperium is driven by hate. Warhammer is not. In response to Uno. One person that took part in one tourney in Spain. <laughs> but we'll get back to that thing because it is hilarious. But I want to talk a little bit about this in broader strokes first. Now, in case you've missed it, I did a podcast over on the Archcast, my second channel. I mentioned that because I'm probably going to upload this on both channels, as it is very relevant, with Sargon of Akkad, where we went through this entire post and a bunch of other articles and various pieces of evidence over the years showing Games Workshop's ever-increasing politicization of their IP and, in particular, their social media. And how this all has a very clear slant to it. It has a blade in it, as Sargon said, which I think is a beautiful way of putting it, because this entire thing takes into account not at all the 41st millennium. This is the chaos narrative on the Imperium, as the Imperium is purely evil and driven by hate. Its numberless legions of soldiers and zealots bludgeon their way across the galaxy, delivering death to anyone and anything that doesn't adhere to their blinkered view of purity. This is fundamentally mistaken and wrong. And hey, you know what? Years ago, I would look at GW and go, how could you make this mistake? But recently, <laughs> this is what I expect. The Imperium is not on the offensive now. It is not driving anywhere across the galaxy, bludgeoning and burning everything. It is on the defensive. The entire story of the 41st millennium is that of a slowly crumbling and collapsing empire besieged on every side by rampant, vile, angry Xenos hordes, by Tyranids, by Necrons, by Orcs, by Dark Elder, by the Tau, by countless minor Xeno species all pecking away at the corpse of the Imperium. The Imperium is not driven by hatred. Hatred is not the goal. Hatred is a mere tool in its desperate drive for simple survival. And again, the fact that GW could make this mistake, and that's that thing too. It is not so much as a mistake, it is a narrative, as they now have moved to ban hate symbols in all of their tourneys, and they ask that everyone else, all the independent organizers, do the same, with a, a hint of a veiled threat in there as well, that you best get in line, lickety-split. And what caused all of this? What caused Games Workshop to take a stance and go, no, no, we must stop the hatred spreading in our community as we are clearly being taken over by the fascist invader. What was this seismic event that caused all of this that spawned dozens of mainstream gaming media articles, all carbon copies of one another? One dude. One. One person at a tournament in Spain showed up with what looked like five welded together swastikas on his shirt. I'm still not even sure that's a Nazi symbol, I've never seen it before, but as I said to the Vice reporter who interviewed me on this subject many years ago, you know more about the fascists than I do, I see. He also had what I've been told is some kind of Celtic cross on his shirt, and, and, the best part is, he entered the tournament under the name The Austrian Painter. <laughs> it is the most blatant troll I think I have ever seen, and the best part is... <laughs> the best part is, some of his opponents gave him free wins by forfeiting to him, by refusing to play because they were so <laughs> insulted, apparently. <laughs> Man. 
Oh, it's, it's a bold strategy, but one that clearly proved successful. I think he came like eighth in the entire tourney. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's just... This is the dumbest thing I've heard in so very long. And this spawned articles with headlines like Games Workshop tries to take back their hobby from fascists. Oh no, one Spanish person has stolen the entirety of 40k. <laughs> the entire thing is just... Oh, it's... It's just... It is inherently ludicrous. It is absurd. There is no massive fascist hold in 40k. It doesn't exist. Literally, I was interviewed on this by a vice reporter years ago who was like, are you aware of the fascist part of 40k? And all I could say was, no, not really. I haven't seen it. And he came over, really? Are you sure? Yeah. Uh, can you show me? I mean, where, where are the, the Facebook groups? Where is Fashhammer on Reddit, for example? Where is the Twitter groups? Where are the fascists organizing to take over the 41st millennium? He couldn't show me any. Years later, I still haven't been shown any. Now, there is a Sig Marxism, as we pointed out multiple times before. There are open communities that identify as communists on Facebook, on Reddit, and push their political agenda openly and proudly. Seemingly not a problem. Now, amusingly enough as well, I did ask the, uh, the War.com team if, if this, is this a hate symbol? Because they didn't mention fascism. They just said hate symbols, after all. Is, is this a hate symbol? I would argue it is, because it's killed a hell of a lot more than both the Austrian painter and the little Italian uh, ex-communist as well. Vast larger numbers, and what a thing too. So this guy here tried to make the counter-argument, and good on him for trying to make the counter-argument too, instead of just screeching. He makes a fairly lengthy post here where he basically goes over that, oh no no, this, this isn't a hate symbol, and why isn't a hate symbol? Because it wasn't required to hate as a fundamental part of the ideology. Which is, of course, absolute, complete hogwash, seeing as the entirety of communism from the ground up is built on class-based hatred. It is a hatred of the, of the capitalist class, of the bourgeoisie, of the uh, people behind the scenes manipulating things. The kulaks, for example, and this resulted in genocide after genocide after genocide after genocide after genocide. <laughs> To the point where it racked up a body count that would make Genghis Khan whistle appreciatively. You do not do that by sheer coinkydink. You don't kill hundreds of millions of people because like, damn it happened again shit. I never intend for this to happen and yet the pile of bodies just keeps rising. No. There is an agenda at play here, and you can't simply just look at the key fundamental ideology of that agenda and go, well, this is entirely separate, is it? It's obvious nonsense, but again, the entirety of this entire article here, it is written from the anti-imperium perspective. At no point do they mention the crimes of any of the other species. They don't mention that the Imperium is literally under siege. This is the chaos narrative on the Imperium. And they mention also that there are no heroes in 40k. And you know what? That's true. There are no heroes in 40k, but by extension, if there are no heroes, there are no villains. 40k is an amoral universe. Even the most vile of evil forces like straight up chaos can have elements of simple neutrality like the blood gorgons for example who simply use chaos as a tool or radical inquisitors who use the tools of chaos against chaos though radical inquisitors might be a poor example since they do have a nasty tendency to submit as well the grey knights which i did a lore video on just the other week utilize the tools of chaos in their banishment bibles their liber demonica day day monica was it to banish demons 
you can use even the vilest of evil to commit good, just as the most pure and good-hearted sentiment can be used for absolute evil as well. From the Tao perspective, they are spreading the greater good not just as an ideology, but to improve everyone's lives, and you can undoubtedly argue that they do improve people's lives. Many of the populaces on the Tao conquered world live a far higher standard of living than under the Imperium. On the other hand, they're also then bound to a slavish ideology that will happily chemically castrate and wipe out the entire population if they see fit. They require absolute adherence to their philosophy and their ideology under an iron fist, just as unflinching as that of the Imperium. And hell, the entire concept of evil <laughs> Once more, it is a pointless a discussion in 40k. Even the Tyranids are not evil. They want to wipe all life from the galaxy, and yet, why are they doing it? Because they're hungry. They are animals. They are creatures of instinct and habit. They see food. They don't think to themselves, oh, I wonder if this food would object to being eaten. No, they just eat it. Even the Necrons feed off the negative emotions of fear, hatred, etc. To them, it is not an evil act, it is sustenance. Now, once more, you can layer upon layer upon layer upon layer of moral implications to all of this. You can balance up the justifications for the negatives const constantly and build a near endless monument to it, and that is the beauty of the 41st millennium. A beauty that even Games Workshop has forgotten, or, well, see, forgotten is not the right terminology, because as mentioned, this will only ever slice one way. You can sign up to an official Games Workshop tournament tomorrow, naming yourself the Georgian Cowpoke, and walk in there with a hammer and sickle armband proudly displayed, and nothing will happen to you. There will be no outcry, there will be no community post, there will be no repercussions whatsoever. Because just like the War.com team cannot answer this question, they've trapped themselves within the ideology. And we went over this in the podcast too. We popped onto that Reddit site, Sig Marxism, and what was the first thing we saw? This is not good enough. Oh, Games Workshop might be saying that they're dealing with the, the hate groups in their ranks, but are they ever going to fix the Space Marines? When by fix, they mean delete entirely, basically. No? Well, that still means they're problematic. Just like I talked about yesterday, this is not a ravenous pack of wolves that you can satiate, GW. I know, I know you're not listening. You are completely taken over by the ideologues at this point, to the point where you have lost control of your own universe. One person in Spain puts you in a position where you are afraid of losing control of your entire IP. That is how weak you have made yourself, how morally panicked you have made yourself. Not to mention the fact that you are now hiring people who can tell apart Primaris power armor from goddamn standard Astartes power armor. Ay ay ay. The roller coaster will go on for quite some time yet. But once more, this is just another evidence of the rot within. There are no goodies in the Warhammer 40,000 universe. It is a 100% negative universe with no redeeming qualities or justifications whatsoever. <laughs> Interesting take, plastic toy manufacturer. I honestly prefer my view of the 41st millennium as an incredibly deep and morally compelling setting where even the worst aspects of humanity have a reason, a rationale. It is not just hatred, it is not just survival, it is not purity, it is not purely religion, it is a fantastic amalgamation of everything that makes us human, and which is then expanded onto alien perspectives. Why are the Eldar so haughty little bastards after having created a chaos god? How can the Tau be of the opinion that it is their manifest destiny to crush 
all opposition in the galaxy beneath their iron shod boots and still be lauded as the good guys. That is the fantastic nature of 40k. A nature that even the people who make it have now thrown aside in favor of blind ideological obedience. It's only downhill from here, but uh, hey, we might as well lean back and enjoy the ride, because uh, beyond gatekeeping and do it gatekeep, 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 otherwise you will find yourself gatekept. But beyond that, lean back, grab some popcorn, and watch the unfolding demise of, 40, of the 41st millennium. Have a good day.